Hey everyone, my name is Patrick Albin from SPMI TV. And in this video, I'm gonna go into detail on one of the most overemphasized skills that athletes are told they need more of, focus. focus. I will also cover several more details on when focusing is a good thing and when it isn't. Most likely, you're also making some of these mistakes in your sport, so you definitely wanna watch until the end. You're watching SPMI TV. Focusing, or what we often refer to in sports psychology as attentional focus, is defined as the process in which an athlete allocates mental resources to various cues, stimuli, or states. In more detail, concentration can then be broken down into four subcategories or four different types. Broad external, broad internal, narrow external, and narrow internal. Now, from sports psychology literature, all four areas serve a pivotal role in understanding how to optimize an athlete's focus during specific moments of performance, such as when a tennis player is about to start a point, or when a figure skater transitions from the start of a program to the first jump. However, this model does not provide the full picture in understanding how to truly manage the physical and emotional challenges of focus. Before going into detail on what you'll need to understand to balance your concentration, I just want to mention that I did discuss the four parts of attentional focus in the most recent podcast that was just released. So if you're interested, please hop over to your podcast channel and subscribe to the SPMI podcast. You may also access this particular podcast in the link that I attached below the video. Okay, so let's discuss the deeper issues that affect an athlete's focus. And as mentioned in the very beginning of the video, not all concentration is a good thing. In fact, one of the most overly stressed comments by coaches and parents is when they tell their kids that they need to be more focused after underperforming. Oftentimes, this response couldn't be further from the truth. So, let's take a look at why that is. First, let's discuss the physical limitations of focus. Athletes who focus for long periods of time without breaks are likely to experience what's called glucose depletion. Glucose is a sugar that acts as the brain's primary fuel source when it comes to focus, memory, and overall learning. When athletes are hyper-focused for extended periods of times without breaks, they run the risk of experiencing glucose depletion. Here, you'll often see the athlete's performance drop from the early stages to the mid to late stages of competition and practice. In this example, there's nothing wrong with the athlete's effort levels when trying to focus. The problem is instead a response to the reduction in the brain's primary fuel source. Therefore, what the coach and parent notices from their athlete is mental fatigue, a byproduct of focusing too much on one or many areas without any mental breaks to recover his or her energy and without any physical aids to help the athlete restore any of the depleted glucose. To understand this example more clearly, think of the physical nature involved in running at optimal capacity. If you told an athlete to sprint for as long as they could, eventually you would see a major drop in performance, where recovery is necessary to continue. The same principle applies to the athlete's brain. Let's now identify the emotional struggles that come from over-focusing. Two primary areas come into play when struggling with focus. The first is called the monkey mind. The monkey mind originates from China and is based on one feeling unsettled, restless, or even confused. This can often be seen among athletes who display signs of fear and worry in and outside of competition. Athletes who focus on results in particular often struggle the most with the monkey mind. To make matters worse, to the untamed monkey mind, athletes will find themselves engaging in checking behaviors and even overtraining. The second emotional struggle that comes from overconcentrating is called the utilitarian mind. This is a different mindset in which the athlete is not focusing on many areas, but is instead hyper-focused on just one area, such as needing to earn a college scholarship. The utilitarian mind is a major problem for many athletes because it's known to increase unhappiness, worry, and the ability to feel for others altogether. A good example of this would be to take a business owner or CEO of a busy company. Due to the nature of the job, 
many struggle to feel for others due to constantly focusing on the many steps engaged in their daily work life. To add to this struggle of the utilitarian mind even more, it is known to even weaken the body's immune system for some athletes. This is because when athletes are too focused on one area for a long period of time, it often creates stress in the body. That stress in one's body when experienced throughout long periods of time without any breaks, such as weeks and months at a time, then becomes known as chronic stress. Chronic stress is the one type of stress that is unhealthy and can be greatly reduced if not eliminated by learning how to not overfocus. So now that we've gone through some of the reasons why being too focused all the time is bad, I now want to offer several solutions to improving this bad mental habit. But before going into those solutions, please make sure to like the video if you haven't. By liking the video, it helps ensure that I can keep providing content to help your mental performance. Also, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll be providing new content on the latest mental toughness skills and topics every week. Okay, so the first solution to breaking away from overfocusing is to reduce your high levels of concentration to only short periods of time. Instead of feeling the need to be highly focused throughout the entire competition, practice allowing yourself to let go of your concentration on one thing and instead bring your concentration to a relaxed state by focusing on something soothing and non-threatening, such as your breathing. Now, this of course does not mean that the athlete is completely spaced out or careless. What it simply means is that the athlete is freeing him or herself from worry and the need to control everything. For example, a golfer may increase their concentration levels significantly during their pre-shot routine and shot. However, after the shot, they may relax and enjoy their beautiful surroundings until they arrive closer to their next shot. For every sport, it'll vary, but try to discover your concentration sweet spot. The next solution to breaking away from too much focus is to meditate. Meditation is a powerful technique that many athletes use in their day-to-day -day training that helps give the brain a much-needed break from over-focusing. This is because meditation helps athletes detach from their fears, worries, and other cognitive fixations. Meditation is so helpful that studies have shown that it improves the quality of one's sleep, stress levels, and even mood. By incorporating meditation daily for as little as 10 minutes a day, you will start to notice more presence, acceptance, patience, and mental clarity. Below, I've attached links to two of the top meditation apps in the industry that I recommend to my athletes. You may click on those links to get started. Also, a disclaimer. At the moment, those top apps do not have any affiliate programs. Therefore, I don't receive any compensation by you signing up. However, maybe that'll change in the future. The third and final solution is based off of what I mentioned earlier in the video on the struggle with glucose depletion. What you want to do instead is make sure to fuel your body during competition. To help maintain higher glucose levels, it's important to bring with you snacks that will help moderate sugar levels, such as bananas, apples, or peanut butter. Of course, avoid snacks that are processed and have high levels of sugar. Also, please check with your professional healthcare provider before altering your nutrition habits, especially if you're diabetic or having any pre-existing conditions. By fueling your body throughout your training and competition, you'll be able to increase the quality of your focus and better regulate stress levels. Okay, so there you have it. A better understanding of how to manage your focus and several solutions on how to improve your focus and overall well-being both in and outside a competition. To get a much more in-depth understanding on how to improve your focus, please check out the company website link below where you may sign up for one-on-one -on -one sessions, group training, or for any of our courses. Also, if you haven't, please like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And lastly, if you enjoy podcasts, please subscribe to the SPMI podcast. I also drop new content there weekly. So all the best in your mental toughness journey this week and see you in the next video.